So here we go again. Here we go again with Star Wars. My God, what is their obsession with absolutely destroying every single Star Wars IP that they get their hands on? What is the obsession? I don't understand. Is it, is it blatant now at this point? Do they completely not realize how to make fans happy anymore? I was really looking forward to Andor. From the initial reports that I was hearing about Andor, it seemed like it was going to be interesting because they were going to focus on characters that were never focused on before, and they were going to try to focus on the actual world within Star Wars, not so much the major characters that play a part in it. I thought it was going to be different, but I was interested in it to a point, okay? I really, really was. And I was looking forward to something that maybe I can actually be interested in. But now, with all these talks that are coming out about the show, and you know what signs to look for, guys. You know what signs to look for. Once showrunners start talking about activism, once showrunners start talking about the message, once showrunners start saying things like, oh, my character is surrounded by men who are just completely inept. They're lazy. They're this. They're... Once you have literal feminazis coming out and saying certain things about the male characters in the show with no other information about the story other than, oh, these men are totally inept and they're going to be saved by the woman. I, 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 I just am like not happy because, you know, I, I, like I said, I was really... I was really looking to give this a shot. I really was. I wanted to give it a shot, especially after Kenobi was pretty disappointing. I was going to give it a shot, but with the, the way that this person is talking right now, I really don't think I'm going to give this show a chance. But, you know, regardless, let's, let's talk about it, guys. So, of course, before we do, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you think of today's story, and let's get into the video, guys. <laughs> Alright guys, today's article comes from us from Bounding Into Comics, and it says, Denise Gao reveals that her Star Wars character in Andor is surrounded by inept men that are lazy, slouching, kind of corner-cutting boys. Denise Gao detailed that her character, Supervisor Deidre Miro, in the upcoming Star Wars series Andor, is surrounded by inept men that she describes as lazy, slouching, kind of corner-cutting boys. Gao spoke with Screen Rant alongside uh, Kyle Soller, who plays Cyril Karn, in the series telling the outlet Deidre when we meet her she's working for the ISB and she's so proud to be doing that but she's surrounded by what she considers to be quite inept men mostly but no all men really and they seem to be missing what she can see of course it's all men of course it's all men all men are just stupid lazy idiots morons whatever word a feminazi wants to use this is the this is the like the 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 red the red flags guys like i don't know Oh, God, I'm so pissed. I don't know how else to say it, but when a showrunner starts talking like this, these are the red flags that you have to look out for to know exactly what's going to be happening with this show. We don't know for sure. Obviously, there is some room for error, but we've been proven wrong very rarely when it comes to this kind of stuff. And when she starts talking like this, you know that this is going to be a problem. Guaranteed, this is going to be a problem. There's going to be a bunch of feminazi stuff pushed in this show because now they basically all, they said that all men are just stupid and lazy and all that. It's ridiculous, man. It really is. And you could say it's just this one person. Not everybody else is going to think or say that. But you, people always say that. And then they end up being wrong. It's ridiculous. Gal continued, I think for Deidre, she is super ambitious. So I don't think uh, you could ever have considered that if Deidre had used her powers for good, uh, I don't think she was ever going to go down that route. She wants to be part of the most powerful organization in the world. And so the way to do that is to prove yourself by doing something that nobody else isn't doing. And that is catching Cassie and Andor. Or at least putting everything together so that she can make the ISB really aware of this person, she added. Gal then returned to comment on, on the men her character surrounded by. She's surrounded by lazy, slouching, kind of corner-cutting boys. And she doesn't like it. So she's going to climb the ranks at whatever cost to everyone else. She went on to state, I think also what I love is that what she's really conflicting about, Deidre, is that it's a new thing, isn't it, to have a woman in this world in this part? So a part of you and I know that for a lot of women watching it, they'll be like, oh my god, go sister, you're doing so well. Then you have to remember, oh, she's a fascist. Oh, the ironic thing is that a lot of the guys or people who support this kind of nonsense are usually fascists. So it's just, it's irony when, when these people speak. It really is. It's kind of funny, though. Gal concluded, so you're sort of on the one hand, if you want a woman in a man's world to succeed... But it's like, no, it's the wrong world, though. We don't want that. She should make you feel slightly uncomfortable at your alliances. So once again, why is it that we have to make a female strong character 
that just constantly feels like the only way they can be strong is by putting down the men around them. Why is that? What is with this constant obsession that Hollywood and feminazis have that they literally think for a woman to be powerful, for a woman to be strong, especially for a woman to be respected, the only way any of that's going to happen is by how much she actually puts down the men around her. Why is that? Can anybody explain that to me other than the obvious that, hey, this is a feminazi talking point. This is literally what they talk about all the time. I'm sure if there was meetings held for feminazis, the first thing that they would say is, how many men have you killed this week? They don't care. They absolutely hate men. It is so obvious that men are on the bottom of the totem pole for them. And the funny thing is, men are the reason why they probably have a lot of the stuff that they use on their daily lives. But of course, men are just incapable of doing anything according to these women. It's impossible. They're all dumb. They're all lazy. They're all stupid. They're incapable. They are useless. That's how these women view men. So when you have women writers in Hollywood that are thinking this way, they are constantly creating women characters that are acting this way. And that's the problem. It's the same thing with Guy Ladriel in The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. It's the same exact thing. They all act the same. It's as if the same character is in every single different show. And that's because the writers are all thinking the exact same way. So when you hire feminazis to write for your show, you just need to realize that when you make them in charge of creating a character and fleshing out the character story, that there's a good chance that they're going to make these characters act this way. And it's really sad because it goes to show the lack of creativity that these writers have, that they just feel like they have to do this. They have to do this in order for the characters to be seemingly strong. They have to do it. In the Andor production brief provided by Lucasfilm, the company describes Gao's character as an ambitious supervisor with the Imperial Security Bureau who is on the hunt for Cassian Andor and will stop at nothing to achieve her goal. Tony Gilroy, the show's creator, notes she is a true, true believer. She is a really hardcore advocate for the ISB. She is relentless. She is inspired. She has deep insights into what the Rebellion might be thinking and what they might be doing next, anticipating their behaviors. So once again, she's going to basically be acting like a Karen. Essentially, it's the same thing that Galadriel's doing in the Rings of Power. Oh, I'm going to get what I want no matter what. I don't care what happens to get in my way. Nothing's going to stop me. I don't care how many people die or lives get ruined in the means. It's like you're a Karen. Why are you creating female Karens? It's weird. Toby Haynes, the show's director for the first three episodes, as well as 8, 9, and 10, also added, the ISB are the worst of the worst. They've got their spies everywhere, and they're listening to everybody and putting all the pieces together. Deidre is fighting her way through this male-dominated organization into a pivotal role. She's ruthless, she's fiercely intelligent, and she's uncompromising. Gal also reiterated her comments to Screen Rant. She would do anything for the cause, and so much of the time, she's looking around feeling like a lot of her colleagues are very mediocre. See, what the fuck? Oh my god. For me, although she's on the side of the villain, she's also evangelical in her belief in the Empire. And in common with all great villains, she has this absolute belief that she's doing what she's doing is, is right, no matter what she does. And she does some seriously reprehensible things so i highly doubt that she's going to be in the conversation with all major great villains of time I, I highly highly doubt that these people are incapable of creating timeless characters that stand the test of all forms of entertainment so listen if you want to make yourself a karen and andor go ahead i guess it's your show do what you want to do but don't be surprised if once again we have this bullshit happening where you are just completely ignored, just like Kenobi. It says, Gal made it clear that the show would also address, oh, here we go, gender politics. In a preview, in a previous interview with Total Film, and even noted it was really relevant to the show. She told the outlet, as a woman in that world, for her to advance in any way, she has to be like 10 times better than anyone else in that room. And that felt really relevant to everything we're going through right now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, listen. This is, this is the problem. When, like I said before, and I'll close out the video saying this, when you have writers, when you have actors, when you have showrunners coming out and speaking in this manner, do not have a high expectation of whatever show that you're looking forward to. Just, just don't. Because it's going to be bad. I promise you. I promise you. Unfortunately for me to say this, it's going to be probably bad. All right? This show is probably going to be bad. It's unfortunate, man, because I was really looking forward to this one. Uh, you know, unless I hear something different, I'm probably going to skip this one. Like, I've been skipping a lot of shows recently. But for all you haters out there, it doesn't mean I have to stop talking about it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, 
comment let me know your story and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out